Hey, welcome back everybody. So we're gonna continue our tutorial through the basics of Adobe Illustrator. So last time we learned how to make some shapes and this time we're gonna learn how to manipulate them a little bit, okay? So let's go ahead and start with a rectangle. Let me give it a fill color and I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in now. Command plus, and if you don't know how to do the basics of what I'm doing, making a rectangle, changing colors, you need to go back and watch the last tutorial, okay? Or watch previous tutorials. So far we've been using the black arrow or the selection tool. I want to show you another um, arrow, uh, the direct select arrow, and that's A, the shortcut, right? This top one is V, and then A is for the white arrow. And with the white arrow, now this was, this was a confusing thing for me when I first started learning this program. But uh, the white arrow will select part of something, whereas the black arrow will take the whole thing, right? I can move the whole thing around. I can change the shape of the whole thing. The only difference is that I can go to this little button here. So, uh, well, we'll get to that in a second. Okay. So um, anyway, let's go back to the white arrow. So A. So it will select part of a shape. So if I click on one of these points here, these anchors, they're called anchors, they're little boxes, I was calling them something different last time, but I, just not to get over technical, but they're actually called anchors, okay? So I click on this little anchor here, now I can move it and manipulate it. If I click on the line, I can move the line, okay? Just that line. And well, it, it's moving other points in relation to that line, but the, this line is what I'm manipulating. If I move this one, I can change the shape of that one. And you can really manipulate shapes a lot with these, right? You can change things from just a regular rectangle to all sorts of different things, okay? Now, you can add more points in here and all that, but we won't get to that yet. But you can also do that as well. Another thing you can do, let's go to the black arrow first, is if I select this, and let me go back to the beginning when it's a normal rectangle. I'm just hitting Command-Z, Command-Z over again until I get there. And if you can see, now I've got these little circles in addition to these anchor points. And they're only in the corners, right? Not, not right here. And what I can do is if my cursor goes over it, and I'm in the black arrow still, and I grab it and pull it in, it's going to round all my edges. And I can turn it to almost like a oval. Okay, so with a white arrow, and I grab the little uh, point there under the anchor point. I don't know what this is called. I don't know if there's an official name for this, but it will do the exact same thing. So a little strange to me. I would think that the black arrow and the white should be different in this regard. Like the white should just do one, but that's not the way this works as far as I can tell. So they both do the exact same thing. Okay, so now let's go ahead and grab one of these points now with the white arrow that I've created. Because if you look here, let me go back. Back, oh, there we go. Okay, well, that's good enough. So watch, one point, one anchor point here. But when I grab this little point, watch what it's gonna do. It's gonna create two anchor points from uh, at each corner. Now these, uh, anchor points or how we make curves in Illustrator, okay? And this gets to something a little different we're going to go into a way more depth with uh, soon. But it creates these anchor points and these handlebars. Just so you know what's going on here, okay? And these handlebars are great at making curves, okay? But um, let's see, so I can really kind of change things. And again, I'm doing this with the white arrow because it's for selecting part of this, right? If I try to do this with the black arrow, uh, I can't get those little anchor points, okay? But that's what those are, in case you're wondering what those are. When, you, when you're with the white arrow and you grab this, you see this change. It's because we've got something different going on now, a uh, way to make this shape, right? Um, each shape is made with, like a, like think of it like a calculation. The curve is dictated by this, and, and this is called a path, okay? So uh, things we want to learn, anchor points and paths, and these paths make um, our shapes. And the, the path is filled in with a color, it's filled in you know, or the, the side can be, um, there can be a stroke added to it, but it's all in relation to this path right here. That's something we can do. But let's let's just do another shape here to get some practice in here. 
Okay, so let's make a polygon here and see what that does. So we got the polygon tool, okay. I'm gonna hold shift here. Okay, so here it is. Let's take a look. Now I got the black arrow, so let's watch what this does. Black arrow gets the whole thing. So if I grab the middle or the sides, it is changing the shape of the whole thing and making it longer or stretching or squashing it. Okay, so let's undo that. Uh, let's see, if I, okay, if I grab the corner, just to be clear, that, that'll change the size of the whole thing in proportion to itself. Okay, now let's see the white arrow. So white arrow, right, it doesn't give me that option to get the whole side. Um, I can just grab individual points, okay? So let's say I wanna keep this, let's see, okay, let me give myself a little more room here. Move the whole, now I grab the whole thing by grabbing the green color and not grabbing a point. Even though I'm on the white arrow, I can still move the whole thing by grabbing the middle and not an exact point, an anchor point. Okay, so let's say I wanna move this, but I wanna make it up like a little spike or point, but I wanna keep it in line. So check this out. You see that little pink line that appears Right? I want to use that intersect line. That's called an intersect line. And I want to use it to keep it in line. But to make it easier, if I hold shift, it'll kind of snap in place. And as long as I don't go too far to one side, if I'm, let me try it again, watch and show you. Going, holding shift, but if I go a little too far to one side of my cursor, it'll snap over to the side at, a, at an angle. I believe 45 degrees. I'm not 100% sure, but I think so. Well, not quite, uh, maybe it's somewhere around there but it snaps into increments, okay? Yeah, I don't think it's 45, I'm not sure what it is. But uh, anyways, it'll snap at increments over, see that? Okay, If I obviously if I don't hold shift, I can just go wherever. Okay, so let me undo that. Here, let's try it again, hold shift, and let's see the intersect line again. And there it is right there, you see now look, it also will create another one lining up with the other shape I made, and tell me when this point is in line with that. All right, this is very useful, Use it all the time to keep things looking symmetrical, neat, lined up, and all that. Okay, so let's see what happens now when we grab the um, little uh, uh, button right here underneath that rounds things out. So the black arrow, just to be clear, if I grab them, it'll change all of them. Right, if I grab any of them. Will let me grab any other ones? Nope, that's the only one that's shown me. So um, let's see if I can get another one to show up. Nope, that's it. Okay, so let's see if I grab it with a white arrow. Now they all appear with a white arrow. And let's grab it. It rounds all of them when I grab that one. Rounds all of them again. Okay, but now watch. I'm gonna make it unsymmetrical. So I'm gonna take this point, move it over a little bit so it's not symmetrical. Now, when I grab this one, it only rounded out that one. Okay, so when I grab that one now, because it's unsymmetrical, it's just rounding out that one. Let's say I wanna round this one out as well. Go there. So. That's a way to change it right now. It's giving me the two anchor points up here, giving me the two here. And now I can see I've got the handlebars here, which are how we make the curves, right? Okay, so another thing. Let's say I wanna add a point in here because I wanna manipulate this shape somehow. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna use this next tool down called the pen tool and the shortcut is P, okay? The pen tool. And the pen tool, we can do all sorts of other things with, and we're gonna spend a lot of time with the pen tool. But one of the things we can do, now let's say I'm gonna put it right in the middle here. Zoom in a little bit just so you can see. So I line this up and it's telling me it's in the middle when I get this little intersect line, and really hard to see over that green color. But there it is. Let me make the color white just so it's easier to see. And there we go. Well, I didn't wanna change it. Oh. Let it undo. Let's just select it there and go white. Okay, so let's try, uh, is that gonna be better? No, let's do black. Maybe the intersect line will show up nicely over black. Okay, pen tool, once again. There we go, now I can see it clearly. And if I have the pen tool and I go right on the line and I click, you can kind of see it change there. There's a little word, I can click on it. Now I've got another point. And I can really do this wherever I want. I can add more points to anything. And then I can take them and manipulate them with my white arrow as well. So we can really, you know, change the shapes that we make um, almost to anything if you know how to do it. Yeah, this almost looks like a word bubble or a word balloon. Let's see if I flip this around. Kind of, yeah. Um, 
you can you can change them any way you want and you can add points in, all right? So simple way to add points in is by using the pen tool, clicking where you want to point. That gives you another tool to manipulate. And you can also get rid of points, okay? So if I go here and say added too many, and I just using the pen tool here now, if you look, there's another uh, tool underneath it, but I'm, it's gotta look like the pen here. And it's the first one. Don't be uh, tricked by the curvature tool, which is right below it, which looks very similar. But here it is. If I move my cursor over the other point that I don't want, you can see a little minus button, very hard to see. A little minus sign appears. Now if I click on it, it'll go away. Okay, so I can get rid of points. I can even get rid of points like that, right? And really, you know, mess with things up, you know? Let's see, whoops, I think I added one in there. It was too far away. There, well, okay, zooming in. So the best way to do this is to zoom in. There we go, because they're really small. Anyway, so ways to manipulate shapes, right? We can use the, just to review a little bit, we can use a black arrow and size them up or down. We can squash them, right, or make them longer. We can use the white arrow to click on points of it and move them around. Even we can click on lines and move them around. We can also add in anchor points by selecting the pen tool. Okay, I can click on parts of the, the shape or the path for the shape with the pen tool. Ooh, I don't think I got it there. There we go, I think. Nope, man, I cannot get, oh, you know why I can't get this one? Because I'm not, I don't have it selected. Let's try that again by selecting it with a black arrow. So by the way, selecting it, I can just drag a box over it. Another thing I should have probably said earlier. So you can select it, just drag like that over it and it selected the whole thing. Now let's try this. There we go, much easier. And I can change it. All right, hopefully you learned from this tutorial how to manipulate shapes a little bit, add some points in, change things up, and I'll see you on the next one.